this is Nova Phoenix coming through lifeblood.com. I'm here to introduce an interview that I've done with Don Perry, the producer and writer of Through the Lens Darkly, a documentary film that was put together that illustrates various photos of the African American experience um, uh, with families and uh, different periods of the African American history uh, within the United States of America. It was a, a, a great interview, and it, uh, honestly, it was going to be something that I was just going to record and uh, write down the line, and uh, it didn't turn out as such, and I said, you know what, what the heck, let me just put it out there as a podcast, um, just one of many. So um, check out this interview, and uh, tell me what you think at the end, and please check out Through the Lens Darkly. It's a beautiful film um, from what I've seen, and... Um, Hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks. So, uh, where did you get the idea for this film? Well, the film originally started uh, when Deborah Willis, who had at that point just published uh, Reflections in Black, black photographers from 1870 to the present. It was a compendium book of the, the historical research that Jeff had been dealing with uh, at that point, probably 20 years in her career. Um, and uh, she was very much interested in some kind of a visual treatment for it. So she approached Tom and Fallon Harris, who is the director and, and my, my, my writing partner and producing partner on the film, um, about doing a, a treatment for the book. And initially, um, as it initially conceived, you know, it, it would have been uh, a, a pretty close following of her chronological history and, and fairly in-depth uh, vignettes of black photographers going all the way back to 1840, uh, you know, starting with Jules Leone, a free man of color who brought photography to New Orleans. But I would say after we interviewed 52 people, uh, 26 uh, photographers and artists working with photography, 26 scholars of, 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 of various disciplines, but mostly focused on the visual image. Um, we had a, a ton of footage, and we were looking through all of this stuff, trying to find well, what's their story, what's going to be compelling. Right. Uh, if, if we put it together in the traditional way, we just thought it would be deadly dull. Mm. And, and so, you know, and we did try. Oh my God, we tried. Uh, we we must have written this film at least a dozen times, had a dozen different uh, cuts of it that uh, you know could have been the final cut, but nothing was really, you know, didn't really click. And uh, it really wasn't until um, I guess about two years ago we were really, really struggling with what film was going to be, that we took a break, took a hiatus, um, and we started to focus on, you know, our, our community outreach engagement project, um, Digital Mass and Family Reunion, which was always conceived as an audience development tool, but during that two years that we were away from the film, uh, Digital Mass returned into a monster of its own. Um, and it, it really helped to focus us in terms of what the storyline had to be. And, and what we got out of Digital Diaspora and, and what its purpose is, is to really concentrate on family photographs and family archives. And the idea behind it was to bring those archives out into the public realm. Because one of the things that we were struggling with with the film was that all of these photographs we were looking at, um, they, 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 they kind of begged a context, um, and, and, and we were struggling to find the context for them. And in digital diaspora, we started to see images that people were bringing to our, our, our live events uh, that looked very much like the kinds of images, historical documentation that we, we were gathering as part of the film research process. And that's when the light bulb really went on and realized that this was, a, this was a film about family, it was a film about family uh, albums, uh, and it was then kind of meta idea of the family album and what's included and what's excluded. 
uh, what we what we show, and what we don't show, and and when you take it out of a, a individual context and you look at it from a national or a cultural context, and you look at the, the wealth of images uh, that have been produced in this country, um, who's there? What's it representing? What is it saying about the people that live there? Uh, and how does it, you know, what narratives does it create uh, in order to reinscribe its own particular idea of itself? Hmm. And that, that's really when the film came together, because now we have family, we have family albums, we have inclusive, inclusion and, and, and absence, and then we were able to use Thomas's personal narrative as the, the backbone, the structure, if you will, that gave us a way into the story. Hmm. We could interweave uh, the history, the art, all of the different topics that, that, that are in the film. Okay. Um, and, and so that's really how it came came together. And I and I, I guess what you mentioned it was uh, took more two plus years in the making to to really get to this point. Well, the total time was ten ten years. Wow. Okay. Uh, we, we went through three rounds of interviews uh, because every single time you know, we'd like, well, we need this, we need that, we need something more, and and so we would interview more people, get more stuff, uh, more content. But, but then once we had all of that, uh, about 2009, uh, we took a two-year hiatus away from the film uh, and, uh, and really you know, spent a lot of time on, on developing the Digital Diaspora project. Uh, and it was during that two-year period uh, that the film DNA really kind of manifested itself. Uh, and then, because we had so much material, uh, we basically took uh, you know, another two years to, uh, to and, and our, our process is you know, throw it all into the, the, the mix, and then you begin to peel it away and make it more centralized and kind of elevate it and, and complicate things uh, so that you get a very, very, very deep, um, rich, um, uh, multi-layered kind of, 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 a pro, of a final product. Right. And that, that's really what we have now. That's what visual, that, that's what visual historically is today. What was, what was the most difficult part of the process uh, when it comes to the film? Pre-production or post? Or the marketing? <laughs> the, the single most difficult part was the writing. Um, because, uh, you know, this film came together literally in the edit suite. Um, so here we are, you know, if you want to, to say post-production from a formal perspective, um, but, but in our post-production, where we're sitting here with all these different uh, uh, you know, hours and hours and hours of interview footage and 20,000 images that we, we gathered as part of our research, um, and we're, we're looking for you know, the story in this, and, and, and literally the writing was the most difficult element mm. of making the film. Because once we had the story, once you had the text, uh, then you could begin to put images to the text. And, and, and then once you had the images, then we could begin to layer in. Uh, a, a comment and analysis uh, and interaction with those images from our, our either our, our photographers or our scholars. And then once we had, say, a sequence put together where we had the text, we had the images, we had the videos, then it became a question of pulling things away, taking things out of it, so that we really essentialized it and really got down to what's the real fundamental point that we want to make here. Have you have you have you discovered anything different uh, about black culture after um, after the film is finished? Anything in particular? Uh, I think there's a lot of revelations. Uh, frankly, um, I mean, uh, of course, our our resilience in, in the face of just you know what would seem to be insurmountable odds uh, is, is absolutely. Uh, you know, the, 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 Heartwarming and, uh, and, and and vital, I think, information because what it says is that uh, as, as one person 
some uh, statements on our po- uh, post on our Facebook page that, you know, uh, we've been through so much that they thought they would destroy us, but instead they created black diamonds. Mm. You know, mm. and, and when you think about that, I mean, that's exactly what we are. You know, we are diamonds. So uh, the, 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 the fundamental message of the film is, you know, talking about our resilience, talking about our our essential humanity, talking about uh, our ability to be ourselves, define ourselves our way uh, throughout the entire course of, of our existence. Uh, it, it was a it was revelatory, not so much from the intellectual perspective because we knew some of this, but to see the images of it. Uh, not just the historical images that were in uh, you know, official archives somewhere, but to see the, the, the same kinds of images in people's personal family archives and to realize the depth and the richness and the variety and, and just the breadth of, a, of, of what we've been through as people and, and, and how, you know, how little of that uh, we pay attention to or, or that we are familiar with. Um, you know, that, that, that was, uh, that was I think, one of, one of the, another one of the major uh, aha moments for us is that uh, you know, there, there are, we have such an incredibly rich history that has been so totally and completely hidden and, and buried and, and uh, you know, divorced from our, our everyday experience. But, uh, it really has left us not just black people, but white people as well, mm. uh, totally bereft of, of a real fundamental understanding of who we are as Americans. Mm. Uh, the, the other great thing that came out of this process was, the, you know, quite frankly, uh, you know, the, the research that we did uh, you know, to rediscover in, in, in kind of a new way, uh, the boys and the souls of black folk, uh, James Baldwin, uh, and, and, and the incredible things that he had to say uh, but, you know, during the civil rights movement from uh, 63 to 67. Uh, I, I mean, you know, the ability to go back and find these, these little sound bites of, of, of him uh, the, that, and, and to realize how, how precious he was in terms of understanding you know, the, the racial issue. Uh, and then, you know, going back further to see how the boys they just nailed it, just absolutely nailed it. Um, and it, it was just a, it, it, it was just a, a, a wonderful rediscovery, uh, if you will. Mm. Well, I, I saw a piece of the film at an MBPC event, the Tech Me film. That's where we met. And uh, you gave me a card. And I didn't get to see the filmies yet, but I will. But the piece that I saw, you know, it peaked, uh, it, I got to a peek into people's lives and who they were and, and, and who their older generation uh, was. What did you learn about yourself during the production of this doc? Um, that's a very good question. I'd have to say that uh, you know, I, I have a much greater uh, appreciation and understanding uh, for all of us today, um, for who we are fundamentally. Um, that uh, you know, it, 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 I have been a, a, a student of spirituality for a very long time, and you know, this film in a way, kind of, uh, kind of deepened um, that, 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 that spirituality uh, for, for me. Uh, because you know, we spent, one, of, one of the other codes that we have written into this film, into the text, uh, it, it, it's drawn heavily from the New Testament. Um, and, and to me, you know, the fundamental issue of that is, is trying to be communicated in the New Testament is this notion of unconditional love. What that is and, and what that really looks like on, on a day-to-day basis. And in the making of this film, uh, I think I have a much stronger appreciation for the absolute, total unconditionality of love in 
all of its dimension because it's just pouring through uh, the images in this film. Because the, the fundamental thing about the, most of the historical, what we now call historical and archival images of black, white, every one of them started off as a family portrait, as a family photograph. Uh, the intent behind the film, behind that, the making of that photograph, whether it was a daguerreotype in the very, very earliest days of photography, or a ten type, or a cartridge set, or, or, or uh, a, a Polaroid. Uh, the, the point behind it was to capture a moment of, of, of love, of preciousness, and to pass it on, to be able to, 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 to send that memento to, to someone that meant something to the person who initiated that photograph. What's, what's the next step for the film? Well, the film is going to be, uh, if we have a distributor, uh, first run features, and uh, it will be taken uh, all across the country. Um, it, it, we, we will definitely be opening uh, in Chicago on September 19th for a week at the uh, Gene Siskel Film Center. Um, and then uh, it you know, will definitely be in Los Angeles uh, on November 14th at the, uh, the Limley uh, for a week-long run. That's to qualify us for uh, Oscar Academy Award consideration. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we, we've got uh, between now and February of next year, uh, we'll be touring uh, with the film and digital diaspora, all of the you know, different uh, different uh, uh, theatrical uh, screenings. And then starting in uh, the end of February, beginning of March, the film will start to open up the uh, streaming video, the VOD, and the DVD sales. Okay, okay, all right. You have a whole strategy lined out here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. now, this is, uh, as we were making the film, we knew what we had. We knew that, you know, a couple of years ago when, when Bill Clinton was president, was talking about uh, America needed to have a conversation on race. This film is that conversation on race. That, that we never had. Um, you know, as Thomas likes to say, uh, his father, stepfather uh, was uh, South African. And uh, when he went to South Africa for his stepfather's funeral, uh, he, it was right after uh, you know, the, uh, Bella was elected and the, the, the Truth and Reconciliation was, was holding hearings all around the country. Hmm. He, he felt that you know, what was missing in America was a Truth and Reconciliation process. This film is that. Nobody can go to this film and not be affected by it. Uh, we've had people just in the, uh, the first week of the theatrical run here that have seen the film three times already. Mm. And they, they get something different out of it each time. Uh, uh, we had uh, Michaela Angela Davis, uh, who went to see the film, uh, was just stunned came out afterwards and said something clicked inside me uh, for the first time in her life she feels somehow complete you know uh, for, for black people this film I think is is the missing piece it, to reintegrating our souls our spirits uh, with the ancestors and with our real value and worth I mean no matter how much we may have you know worked on our own particular issues and have our, our, you know, our own self-esteem uh, you know, at, at, at a particular place, this film takes it to another level. Uh, and for, for white audiences, uh, it, it, it is a revelation. Uh, it, it is, there's just no two ways about it. I mean, they cannot come out of this film and look at black people in the same way before they went in. It, it, it's... Uh, they, they will be forever changed because of what they've seen and experienced. Um, <laughs> I, it deconstructs a lot of the the programming that they've been put in that, that they've been indoctrinated with all their lives, you know, since birth. <laughs> Just the same way we have, you know, they exactly. have, and that's how racism kind of like develops because of these um, because of this misinformation, and, and they don't have the full story. Well, I mean, 
as, as Baldwin says, we are kissing cousins. Mm. You know, there, there is no black without white. There is no white without black. Uh, we could not exist uh, without each other. You know, that's how tightly intertwined we are. Um, race, this idea of race, is itself a fiction. Mm. Right? It was a construction in order to allow white people to do the things they did to black people without disturbing their own psychic uh, you know, makeup. Mm. Uh, if you, you, you know, the, the kinds of dehumanization, uh, if they honestly thought we were human beings, it, it would completely destroy them to be doing the things they were doing. You know, the, the kinds of treatment that they, they, they inflicted on their enslaved people. So the, the only way that they could stay in one piece mentally was to say, oh, well, they're not like me. They're on a different evolutionary path. Mm. They are not related to me. Uh, they're only three-fifths human, mm. right? Race was constructed to give them cover, mental, psychic cover. So that they could they could maintain uh, the, the the economic and, and political and, you know, system that they had. It was founded on the enslavement of people. Hmm. Right. So when you take away that big leaf, that fiction, that construction, what are you left with? If you're not superior, because there is only one race, the human race. If if white people are exactly equal to everybody else, then it does change their perspective, right? It, it, they, there, there is no master race, mm. right? Then, then you really have to have the conversation uh, about, uh, you know, politics, economics, subjugation, uh, you know, creating a social apartheid uh, in order to maintain yourself at the exclusion and expense of others. I have one last question. Uh, you, 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 you set out the strategy, uh, as you said before, uh, how, what you're going to lay out for the film. Now, how do you define success for this film and in, and any future ones for that matter? Because, you know, what's important that, you know, I got from Ava DuVernay, the, the, the director, that, you know, we have to develop our own um, means of getting our film out there or uh, whatever that we're creating. And I, I, just to touch back on what you said before, that it's important that we develop those connections because really it's not going to happen if, if we don't do it for ourselves. Now, based on that strategy, how do you define success? Where do you where do you see your contentment to say, OK, OK, we did what we did. And, uh, you know, um, where, where, what's, where's, where do you see yourself with that? We had always wanted uh, this film and, and, and through Visual Diaspora, which goes along with it, uh, to, 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 to be the, uh, the, the, the spark for a movement of people, particularly people of color, uh, reclaiming their, you know, themselves, reclaiming their, their depiction, uh, re reclaiming their identity. And, and, and putting forward into the public sphere uh, images that, that are truly more inclusive and representative of who we are. And uh, for us, yes, success is certainly defined by uh, you know, a, a really good theatrical run. We get a lot of people that, that come and see the film. And, you know, like the film forum, we've had sellouts every day uh, of, of the run. That's great. But what really defines success for us um, it is when an individual takes up a camera and then posts to Instagram and says, this is who I am, one world, one family. That's our hashtag, uh, the, the, the number one world, number one family. Uh, when, when individuals start to, uh, to do that and begin to create a movement uh, around you know, putting their representation as they see themselves into the public sphere, uh, creating a, an incredible wall of images that, that is just, uh, you know, the full diversity of, of, of the wonderful flowers of God's garden. Mm. That is success. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
so that was Don Perry, um, the producer and writer of Through the Lens Darkly. He had uh, some great insights on on just uh, the African American experience from doing this film, and uh, I, I wish him the best success um, for his future films that he's working with his uh, colleagues and uh, any future partners. And just look out for uh, more podcasts that I'll, I will put out and down the line. Uh, from you know, uh, hopefully they can be interesting pieces uh, that people would would take the time out to listen to when they're on LifeBlood.com. I appreciate all the listeners, all the people, the new clickers and old clickers, and um, I look forward in providing you uh, the best media experience that I can uh, give you. So thanks again, and uh, keep watching, keep listening, and uh, keep coming back. Thanks. Bye.